biggest differentiator is the feel. There's a certain feel to it. You can do the same song, but if you give that same song to R&B artists, or if you give that same song to country western artists, that same song will sound particularly different on how the groove is or how the feel is of that song. Thanks for joining us on Louisiana's Playground Podcast, your roadmap to all things Lake Charles, Louisiana. I'm Brady Raynard. And I'm Anna Strider. We are excited to bring you episode number 18 as we continue to share the authentic stories of Southwest Louisiana, giving you all the tools you need to build your perfect Lake Charles itinerary. And episode 18 will be a foot-tapping episode as we talk to Brennan Ledette, a local Zotico musician who's just recently celebrating 10 years in the business 10 years of entertaining guests and really sharing the gospel that is Zotico music. But before we get started with this fun conversation, we're going to begin the show as we always do with a taste of Southwest Louisiana, which we call our foodie segment, On the Eats. On the Eats is, of course, the segment where we go to a local restaurant, try a couple of things, and let you know just how good our food scene is in southwest Louisiana. Yet another wonderful addition to the list comes our way via Insane Sausages, specifically the Sulphur location. We are so excited that owner Derek Gaspard has brought his fantastic business over from the Vinton area and expanded it to be in Sulphur. Derek actually started this business as a hobby of his when he started making different sausages and boudin for his co-workers at the time and they told him hey man you might actually want to quit your day job and start doing this full time because it's insane all puns intended so Derek opened up his Vinton location right there on exit four as soon as you cross over the state line from Texas or if you're about to head over it's one of the last exits before you get into Texas and that has just prospered being a meat market as well as a deli almost serving up very unique dishes. And the meat market and deli both expanded into the sulfur location but there's a much bigger focus on the actual restaurant portion and it really shows and reflects in their menu and the quality of items that they've got i'm so excited to talk about what we were able to eat but before we get there just a kind of a rundown of what they have they have surf and turf melts boudin sliders pull boys sandwiches especially chicken sandwiches smoked and steamed boudin as well as the numerous sausage options in addition to their meat market Exactly. Their meat market at both locations is absolutely phenomenal. Derek truly pours his heart into creating different and unique sausages and boudin flavors that you can only get here. Some of the most popular, at least in my opinion, are the steamed syrup sausage. They also have the breakfast sausage, crawfish boiled pork sausage, beef sausage, green onion, you name it, they've got it there. And if they don't have it, Derek is always welcome to different ideas that are insane and out of this world to try and mix it up and see what's going to stick. Going on to what we were able to order, I got the insane chicken sandwich, which it's just a huge piece of fried chicken on some awesome jalapeno sourdough bun. It comes with pickles and then your choice of sauce. There's about eight or nine sauces to choose from. I got both the Asian Zing and the Angry Insanity Think of it as like a spicy cane sauce, and then the Asian Zing has obviously some Asian flavors. It's a very sweet sauce, but it also packs a little heat, too, and they both paired exceptionally well with the chicken sandwich. And then once somehow you power through the whole sandwich, then the fries dip in that sauce oh so well, too. I'm telling you, Anna, that's it's one of my favorite chicken sandwiches in town. I am all in on the sandwich. It's funny that you mentioned that chicken being all in because I've been trying to eat a little bit better. You know, it's a hard job eating food and trying to talk about it and still fitting in those great pants I love. So I ordered a salad on this one, but I ordered the chicken salad. So it had that fried chicken chopped up on top. And I've got to say it was absolutely phenomenal. Not only the flavor of the fried chicken, but just the salad itself was really well portioned. It was generous in its toppings. And I paired it with the insanity sauce. They do have a number of other traditional dressings that you can put on. But I was kind of like, heck, let's go with it. And 
That's not the only thing that we got, though. We did, of course, have to order boudin because like the different sausages that they have, the meat market offers a number of unique boudin flavors, including smoked pepper jack, cheese, and a crawfish boudin. So we had to order a link of boudin at the table. I personally prefer the unsmoked versus smoked boudin. So that's what we went with today. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. In addition, somehow, despite all of the other food we had, we also had to get their bread pudding. It had a great texture to it, a very sweet praline glaze on top, so the pecans were great. And overall, if you know what to expect with a bread pudding, this meets your expectations exactly what you want. I love bread pudding, and uh, this is definitely one that is uh, comes recommended. And though we love the bread pudding, we ate boudin, we ate a chicken sandwich, a chicken salad. Our coworker who was there with us, she got the Cajun fries. And I would be remiss if I did not touch on these amazing fries. It is a bed of fries that has boudin, that insanity sauce, ranch, and green onions. Comes in a full or a half order. Get a full order. Eat it for dinner. It is heavenly. I did also take a bite of that as well. So we were quite full leaving this meal, clearly. And luckily for us, the Sulphur location is conveniently located off the interstate. Exit 23, the city services exit. The same one if maybe you're going to McMurray Ballpark for baseball at any point during the summer or maybe for the high school state championships. It's the same exit, and it's just, you know, 30 seconds off the interstate. So really, really convenient whether you're coming or going. Exactly. So whether you're heading to the Vinton location right as you enter the state of Louisiana on exit four or you're in Sulphur there at their new location, it's a great place to stop in and get a bite for lunch or dinner. So stop in and let us know what you think. From a great meal to a great guest, we welcome on Brennan Ledette, a Zotico musician who was born and raised right here in Calcasieu Parish. He's immersed himself in the ever-evolving culture of Zotico music as he tries to do his part in sharing his Louisiana Creole culture. For more than a decade, he's performed with his band, Brennan Ledette and the Creole Touch, as he's become a Zotico staple in southwest Louisiana. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Glad to be here. As we know, Southwest Louisiana is known for our big city entertainment and our small town charm and just a little bit of everything in between. And today we get to talk about that small town charm music almost that's unique to our area and the state of Louisiana, but it gives you a big city entertainment kind of feel. So we're really excited for today's conversation. But before we get started, we want to ask you a few questions to get to know you a little bit better and figure out how you play in Louisiana's playground. Oh, sure. We can get right on into it. All righty. He's ready, y'all. Okay. The first one, crawfish or gumbo? I'm going to have to say gumbo for me. Gumbo? Okay. Why gumbo? Well, gumbo... You know how they how they say, well, you got it's got to be cold weather for you to eat gumbo. Well, we got air condition for that. You know, <laughs> it's always gumbo season. Yeah, that's it's our, always that, gumbo season. That's our motto here on the podcast. Uh-huh. I'm being convinced in that manner as well. What is it specifically about gumbo that's really special to you? Gumbo can be, you know, there there's a stigma about how people got to cook gumbo, and I know we can be the the world's toughest critics on how somebody makes their gumbo. But uh, there's many ways you can do it. There's many ways you can eat it. And uh, if you want it with potato salad or without potato salad, that's just your own business. But uh, (laughs) you can put your own twist to it. You could take your time with it. You can rush it. But uh, it's better when you take your time, just like your music. All right. The second question, poolside or beachside? Hmm. I'm a beachside person. Just for the ambiance of uh, of hearing the waves out there, smelling the salt water, all that. Uh, I'm an avid fisherman. I'll say I'm a Louisiana fisherman. I like to fish uh, inland shore water. I like to fish fresh water. I like to fish offshore. You name it, I'm I'm there if it's, if it's an invite. <laughs> one more question for you, and I think this one's the most difficult. I don't know. Concert or comedy show? I love some comedy, but I'm a concert person. I w- honestly, I would have been shocked if you said comedy. <laughs> well, sometimes it could have been a separation between work and play, right? Yeah. But is music work for you? In a sense, physically, yeah, it is work physically. 
but uh at the end of the day it's a uh, it's a satisfaction that i get out of it that my performance had people enjoying themselves having played for a decade now when you go to a concert do you view performances through a different lens now than maybe what you used to do yeah uh definitely and it goes across not just not just zydeco but all genres you look at it more through the eyes of an artist and i learned this through uh sitting with older musicians than myself you know they may not be a a, a follower of a certain type of genre but they can sit there look at what they're doing and analyze it for what it is as a craft and music work. But I can look at that and be like, man, that guitarist is off the chain skillful. He's doing he's doing some work. Back to the conversation is hand, and I'm going to tie it back to that first question we asked you when you talked about gumbo and all that it was. I think in comparison, Zotico to me is almost a gumbo of music, right? In terms of how many different genres and how much different inspiration the music takes from other genres and other instruments and just other artists overall for you someone that obviously is a gumbo fan but more importantly is a zodico musician someone that is born and raised in zodico music how do you explain it one of the best ways i can explain zodico is that it does have a root base of where it started from and then it kind of just grew and evolved. If you look at, and we'll, we'll touch base on this as far as Zydeco and Cajun music, and that music pretty much sound the same no matter who it came from in the Acadiana area. It didn't matter what they looked like, it didn't matter how they dressed like, they pretty much called it all French music uh, from the start. And then here we go with Americanization of Louisiana, and you start getting people with radios, people with mass media, and the people that were secluded in Louisiana to their own devices, um, they start hearing these outside influences over the radio. They start hearing rock and roll, some R&B, some blues, some country western, and then people start adding those flavors in with the, what I say, Acadiana style French music that we have here, and then it starts giving birth to something that we got called Zydeco. And that's how Zydeco started evolving from what you would call Cajun Creole music, which I call Louisiana French music because everybody played almost the same. It's just Acadiana French style music. And visually, both Cajun music, or as you say, uh, Louisiana French music, is visually similar to Zydeco in terms of a lot of the instruments being played. But then, as you said, it kind of differentiates there. What do you feel like is the biggest differentiator between the two musics? The feel. There's a certain feel to it. You can do the same song, but if you give that same song to R&B artists, or if you give that same song to country western artists, that same song will sound particularly different on how the groove is or how the feel is of that song. You know, a bass player that played that plays country western music, they're going to put a certain feel in that song that's going to sound a certain way. You got a bass player that plays R&B and blues, that one's going to have a certain way it's going to sound. When you're talking about feeling and the differences and the, the types of music, you keep coming back to the people, and it's really about the people who are playing those instruments and putting their passion into the songs and just really what they're doing and how they're expressing themselves. When you talk about the history and the people who were in those smaller communities that were more shut off, what was that experience like in, then? When it comes down to like the Lake Charles area, you started getting a lot of the uh, refineries that started getting built and you needed workers. Most of those workers were about an hour east of here. Mm -hmm. And everybody from here, from if you wanna say that are mostly Creole people or, or, or Cajun people, they, um, they're they from Lake Charles area or west of here from Houston, they call Opelousas, Lafayette, they call that down east. Mm -hmm. And what happened, a lot of those workers, they left the uh, agricultural fields to come start working in industry over here in Lake Charles. And also in, like I say, in East Texas. And uh, they were building refineries. They needed lots of concrete finishers or cement finishers to build those huge refineries and plants. Mm -hmm. And that's what, uh, that's what a lot of them did. They, uh, they worked in the construction of building plants. 
And that's where the music left from there, or it came with the people that left from that area and ended up in these areas here. And that experience, though, when everyone would come together and they moved out here and the family members, that's really where Zydeco happened in the family, right? It was, from my understanding, that front porch, you clear everything out, and you really just sit with the family members and play the many different types of instruments that are in the bands. Indeed. Um, that's where the that's where Zydeco got its start was families getting together. Um, if I could uh, go into depth on that, they used to have something called house dances down east. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was before they started having Zydeco's and nightclubs and other public places like church halls and stuff like that. A, fam a certain family would say, hey, we're going to throw the house dance at my place. And, you know, they'd move the furniture out of the out of the living room area. And um, that's where everybody would go dance at, and they have certain musicians get together. And it wasn't big and amplified like we have now, you know, not anything near like a big Zydeco festival or something like that, like we played a couple of weeks ago over there at the Civic Center. It was in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, it started growing into where, you know, some people built uh, small nightclubs in the country, and, and then they started uh, having – Zydeco dances like that, but the instrumentation started off simple. It may have been a chord in a fiddle or a chord in a washboard or, you know, just uh, just that. When I was younger, if we had like family reunion or maybe a wedding or something like that, yeah, they might have had somebody trying to trying to DJ, but the, the real star of the show was when the family members would get together and we'd have a Zydeco and, and we'd all play live, you know. That's where, that's where... You know. That's where the most fun happens. Oh yeah, that's where the most fun. That's is. where the iron is sharpened, right? You know <laughs> exactly <laughs> where the craft and the passion really kind of takes hold. Now you you touched on the instruments, things like the fiddle, the washboard, and then of course the star of the show, if I may, the accordion. Each of those instruments are so uncommon, which makes it so recognizable for Zodico. Do you think that adds to the allure because? You don't hear an accordion every day, so you know when you hear it. Oh, exactly. It the the allure is is instantaneous. You ever see a dog when somebody uh you know whistles or something like that and the ears go up, poop. <laughs> yes. You know, okay, that's that same thing. Say say if like and I can I can vouch for the experience myself. I was working out of town. I was way in Kentucky. And I tuned in on a radio show and this was late at night, you know. And all of a sudden, I hear I hear that accordion going off. I whoop, was tuned in right there, and it was Zydeco. It was it wasn't another genre. And it was like yeah, the radar went right off. Poop, you and know it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's home right there. <laughs> you know, here I am, way from home, and you know, just in shock. You know that it's appreciated from way outside of where where you're from. You know, little teardrop. Hey, proud of that. You know. <laughs> And something that I really do like about Zodico music and, and Cajun music in a, a larger, broader term, I don't think I've ever met anyone that says, I don't really like that music. It might not be their favorite genre, but everyone likes it. Oh, yeah. And I think it has to do with the passion behind it and the feeling behind it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If, you know, and it's been the, the phrase has been coined by, by some other people say, if something about that music does not move you, to some degree, you better get checked by a doctor because you might not be breathing or something like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I can vouch for that. Everyone who I've introduced to Zydeco music and who has introduced me to Zydeco music, the first reaction is always to move and oh, yeah. to tap your toes. And we saw that in Austin with Sean Ardwin playing just last weekend when we were there and they had bands all day long right and he was the closing act of the evening and the crowd came alive in comparison to everybody out there and there were so many people who were like i've never heard this before or something like that who were in the crowd just dancing and having a great time when they had been hearing fantastic music all day but nothing was that accordion that zydeco playing the star of the show you know something with that accordion it's, it's just something about it <laughs> and I mentioned Sean Ardwin, but there's a number of artists, both local, regional, and national, that are 
from right here in southwest Louisiana in this pocket. Oh, yeah. Over the years, we've had quite a few artists that not only from, you know, the 100-mile radius, but right here in the 50-mile radius or in, and closer where you've had uh, one of the most popular ones was uh, Rockin' Sydney Simeon. Mm-hmm. You know, live right there on Cherry Street. You know, Boozoo Chavis. I mean, real big name on, on Zydeco and uh, influencer in the music on how it's played today. Real big influences. And there's quite a few other musicians that aren't per se the accordion players, but they played their supporting roles. You know, bass players, guitar players, drummers. A lot that was right here from Lake Charles, Louisiana, right here in this area. And you've talked so much about how Zydeco started and how it's progressed and then the names that have come out of this community. What are some of the ways that you all are fostering Zydeco in the next generation? Well, you know, the first thing off is that if you're going to play the music, and and I say this to the newer generation, because, you know, the first thing they do, they want to they wanna be like who they hear right then and there. That's the popular person right mm-hmm. off the bat. They want to... I want I want to play like that guy right there. That's good. You're interested. That's good. But while while you still have that interest right there, let's reel back the tape to the stuff that you haven't seen yet, and let's expose this younger generation to the stuff where it started. That way they know where the roots of it all comes from, and then let's break it down from there and let's let's build it up to where you're really on a, on a platform right there to start with. When you have a certain music and I want to say folk music, you're going to have purists that try to stay really, really based in the old root foundation of it, and that's good. You have that. That's going to be the ones that can give the foundation to the younger people, and then you have your progressive people as well. And everybody plays a good role in that because if the music doesn't evolve somewhat to somewhat of a degree to catch the ear of the younger people. If it doesn't evolve a little bit, it will just be a museum music, which exactly kind of just dies off, and that'd be the only way you will hear it. We've talked about the difference, and you kind of said that the, the, the feeling of it. How do you explain that feeling, or how can you explain that feeling? It's going to be uh, one hardcore word I can give is groove. It's how the groove is laid down how the rhythm is laid out, basically. Kind of like having a swing beat to something, you know, musically, and having a straight beat, you know. That's how I can explain, like, to how you have a feel to it, you know. Yeah, being that this is a uh, an audible-style show, could you give us a quick sample of kind of what you're talking about, that feeling, since you did bring your accordion in studio with us today? Oh, yeah. I can try to do something without, like I said, without band, but I can I could give a demonstration on on according how you For know sure. how I might play something that's from the early time period and how it might sound how it has a more of a swing to it. That was fantastic. I I hated to ask you to stop at that point. You, know, you, you could have just kept going for the rest of the afternoon. And I will say, Brady stood up for this, and he naturally had a toe tap. I don't know if you caught yourself doing, it, but it just it's just like a natural. It's group. home. You just move. The toe tap came in. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. home. It was just a little you know? toe tap, but uh-huh. it's just natural. Look, it's it's involuntary as. As a uh, as a Louisiana boy, it's it's just it's natural. It's it's part of my blood, my genetics. The ears perk up and the toe starts tapping, yeah. and you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you see a little baby out there. If you see a little baby or toddler that that's just in walking stage, and you hear him, you you well you see him, and they hear music, you immediately see that that diaper going up and down. <laughs> they 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 up there doing a little bounce, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that is maybe the quintessential portion of Zotico music is that not every genre of music is made to dance to and is made for those things. But it feels like that without 
dancing. If you if dancing wasn't a thing, then Zonica wouldn't be as popular. But good for everyone else. It is a thing. It does exist. That feeling you mentioned groove. It feels like the people listening and moving is just as important as those being on stage playing it. Oh yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, that's part of um, the whole thing about performing. You know, you have musicians that they perform music, and it will be what you call listening music. You know, they sit there, they can appreciate the artwork in the music, the art form in the music, um, and you know, you have highly, highly skilled musicians. You know that play jazz and stuff like that, but it, it's just listening music. It's not music that, you know, that makes the body really, really move and groove. It, you know, it, it, uh, it excites the brain, you know, to an extent, but it doesn't move the body. Well, that's why it started as a house dance, right? That's what exactly. y'all called it because it was, I mean, we're going to play music, but we're really dancing. Y'all come over, we're going to start dancing because you're just naturally going to start moving and grooving. Best way I could put it, Zydeco is made to dance to. So what's the best way to experience Zodico here in Southwest Louisiana? We have dances, certain venues that we have. We have festivals, certain venues that we have. One that I just uh, just performed at a couple of weeks ago was downtown Lake Charles Crawfish Festival, and that was a real success over there. And we had plenty of people that came out there and enjoyed it. I know we had COVID that kind of shut things down for a good while, and um, it was good to see that many people in attendance and uh, out there enjoying themselves on a beautiful, nice day. One other place that uh, that they just kicked up a, a Panorama Music House. They're uh, they're doing a Zydeco brunch now on Saturdays downtown right here in Lake Charles. And I just played there this past weekend, and that was successful over there. They had a lot of people showed out, and they came and enjoyed themselves. One other thing that I would say it's not very, very open publicly. I and a friend of mine, we host a, a old school Zydeco jam session for the older musicians, you know, some of them that aren't playing and gigging, and we get together and we have a uh, might have a cookout or something like that, and we we do jam session Sundays, but that that's that's on that's on the exclusive side. <laughs> for, 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 <laughs> you got to work up to yeah. that invite. Cause, yeah, because that, that that's held at somebody's house. Yep, exactly. <laughs> but um. Uh, but it reminds me, there is a public version of that that they have in town at Genie's Barbecue in Westlake. They, it's more focused on the Cajun side of music, but I'm certain that there are curio musicians that roll through and kind of rip on stage as well. Yeah, over at Genie's Barbecue, which is, uh, they do that on Monday Monday evenings over there for the uh, Cajun Jam session, which uh, I pop in over there and come show my face and put all labels aside, you know, as far as Cajun, Creole, Zydeco, and all that stuff like that. It's still how we how we refer to it when we go back to the old style. We say it's all Acadiana style French music. So you go and you go and play the old school music. There you go. I mean, you can call it Cajun. You can call it Creole. It's both where it comes from. If you know if you if you know you're studying up and everything. It's Louisiana music. Yeah, it's Louisiana music. Yeah. Is that a great place for people to kind of take in a very unique? version of the music that maybe you don't necessarily get to see at the festivals oh yes indeed yes indeed and that's um it's a good chance a real a real good opportunity for people to see some of the uh some of the roots style music and that's that's right here in the pocket of southwest louisiana right here but the the old school music is, is alive and well you know and still going and you got and you do have some young people it's not just not just you know musicians that are like 60 years old and older you have some younger guys that come in there and 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 ladies too they come in there and they and they they play the music carrying it forward yeah yeah you've got to understand those roots and just how much this is uniquely louisiana and southwest louisiana at that exactly exactly well brandon it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast today if people want to keep up with you and the Creole Touch, where can they do that? You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. Um, Instagram is official Creole Touch. I'm Brandon Ledette on Facebook. I have a few little funny things on TikTok. Official Brandon Ledette on TikTok. I don't just do music, but I, I do some cooking on there as well and stuff like that and show off some of my Southwest Louisiana style cuisine. I always get somebody that comes up to me, they said, I always see you on Facebook cooking. I said, well, I don't put out that many cooking videos, but they, 
they pop up, I guess. I don't know. They, they stick. <laughs> and you know what's funny is that we're ending, first of all, with TikTok. You're the first person that we've had a conversation with that's plugged their TikTok account. So definitely moving forward, but always comes back to food. We've talked about music, and here we are ending on food. We wouldn't have it any other way. Thanks again for Brandon for joining us here on the show, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us here on the podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a rating or a review. Maybe even press that plus sign up there for follow as you hopefully follow our podcast. Every time that you do, it helps us grow our audience with people like you so that we can continue to bring you the unique experiences that Lake Charles in Southwest Louisiana has to offer. Go to visitlakecharles.org slash podcast for more episodes, where to eat, and events happening this weekend. I'm Anna Strider. And I'm Brady Raynard. Thanks for coming play at Louisiana's Playground. Say to you. <laughs>